summer crock pot recipes you know they're such a winner you don't have to heat up your kitchen and I've got you four more hey friends my name's Susan and welcome to my home today I've got you four of the best quick and easy crock pot recipes for summer your family's gonna love them cuz I know we sure did so let's get our ponytails up and let's get to making some quick and easy crock pot recipes come on let's get to cooking It's time to get something in the crock pot. I am gonna be making some crock pot Hawaiian meatballs. Basically, I've got some Angus meatballs I thought would make some really good meatballs. Some minced garlic, some pineapple chunks, ginger, rice wine vinegar, liquid aminos, a little bit of barbecue sauce, and some brown sugar that we're gonna be putting in my smaller crock pot today. So let's go ahead and get a few things added in so we can start the time. The recipe calls for you to put everything into a bowl and mix them up. I'm not. We're just going to add it in to the, to the crock pot and then mix it and then put the meatballs in and get them all coved. I am going to be doing about a third of the recipe. It calls for three pounds of meatballs. I've only got about one pound of meatballs. So let's get started on getting everything put into the crock pot. I'm going to go ahead and add in a little bit of ginger. Like I said, this is a third of the recipe. So what you'll be using will be depending on how many meatballs you're gonna do. So I'm gonna add some ginger in. I'm gonna add in some minced garlic into the crock pot. Some brown sugar is going in the mix. Now I'm gonna put in a little bit of barbecue sauce, a little bit of soy sauce or liquid aminos, and a little bit of rice wine vinegar is going in. Okay, now, next is going in about a third of the container of the chunked pineapple. I'm going to try not to get very much of the liquid in here, because it doesn't want the liquid. It says it's supposed to be drained, but, you know, I'm doing the best I can with this one. I think I got a little bit more, and then I'll call it good. Okay, that looks pretty good. That looks about like a third of the a third of the can right there. I'm gonna go ahead and mix this around. And now I'm gonna add in all the meatballs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and coat these as good as I can in this sauce down here. It says you're supposed to do the sauce in a separate container and then pour it on top of the meatballs. You know me, I don't want to dirty up another bowl or whatever. So I'm just going to do it here in the crock pot. And then make sure all of them are on the bottom. And try to get the pineapples up on the top. Because I don't want them to burn. And then it'll be time to start this. It says to do high for two to three hours or low for, for four to six. I'm going to go ahead and put this on high. This crock pot is extremely hot. Probably for about an hour to an hour and a half and see what I've got. So let's go ahead and get this thing a cooking. And it's been about two hours. And this, woo, is what it all looks like. It smells absolutely divine. I tell you what. And it looks like that the meatballs are completely done. They've even got a little bit of brown on the bottom of them from being in the crock pot. So it's time to eat. This was so good. Spot on. Hawaiian meatballs are the way to go. Those Angus frozen meatballs were very good. And this just made them. I make chicken tacos in the crock pot quite often. But this is just a little bit different. Slow cooker queso chicken tacos. Just about the same ingredients. Got some chicken breasts that are frozen. Taco seasoning. Some Rotel, Mexican cilantro and lime. I've got some green chilies and I've got some salsa con queso. And we're going to get this in the crock pot. And then whenever we get back from work, we'll get ready to add the rest of the ingredients and get it made up. First thing I'm going to add in is the chicken breast. I'm just going to basically cover the bottom with chicken breast. It calls for four 
But these chicken breasts are really, really big. I think I might just put three in if I have a small one. Uh, here's a smaller one. There we go. Now, I've got three chicken breasts going in. Those are good. I'm going to go ahead and add in some of my Tony's Taco Seasoning into the crock pot. About the equivalent of a packet of taco seasoning. And y'all see me do this quite often. That's the same way I do with my regular ta uh, chicken tacos. Next going in is the Rotel. Just going to pour that on top of the chicken. And then the can of green chilies is going in also. Now the secret to this is it's frozen on the bottom and as this cooks it will defrost. So you do not need to add any water. It's not going to stick because this chicken is going to put off some water as it's cooking. I'm going to go ahead and turn this on low while I'm going to work. And then when we get back you'll see the amazing goodness that is in this crock pot. It's going to be good. Okay, let's get to work. And I came home from work. And this is what I found in the crock pot. Look how beautiful that is. Let me go ahead and get this shredded up. And I know y'all watched me long enough. You know I love getting my meat mallet thing in here and shredding up this meat. And that is what you call quick and easy chicken shredding. If you've never done it that way, that's the way if you're making a shredded recipe to get it done. This recipe says to add the whole 15 ounces of salsa con queso. I don't think I need that much. I think I'm going to add in about half of this and see how it goes because mind you it was calling for a whole lot more chicken than I put in. I'm basically going to stir it around until it looks like it's got a lot of good cheese in it. Now I might need the whole thing. Shoot. There we go. Okay, queso in. I did need all of it. It knew what it was talking about. All right. Now I'm going to let all this cheese melt, and then we're going to put it in tacos, and we're going to have some supper. Quick, easy, simple, and that's how long supper took when I got home. That's what I call easy. Cheesy goodness. This is so good, and the cheese is all throughout it. You didn't have to put as much cheese as I did, but I tell you what, it was nice and spicy and delicious. You can adapt a lot of recipes to a crock pot. My homemade meatloaf recipe is one that I'm gonna do in the crock pot today. Um, I usually do a two pound of hamburger. I'm only doing one today. I've got some onions one egg, some onion soup mix, which I'm going to use half a packet, cornbread stuffing, which I'm going to use half a packet, and lots of ketchup. So let me show you how I get this ready to get into the crock pot. The first thing I'm going to add in is, of course, the hamburger meat. I defrosted it, and now it is ready to become something amazing and wonderful. I'm going to go ahead and add in some of the wet ingredients first. Ketchup. I call for about three tablespoons of ketchup. That is for two pounds of hamburger, so I'm gonna do a nice big squeeze. I may add more later. It depends on how wet or how dry everything is. I'm gonna go ahead and add in the egg to the mixture. And then I'm gonna go ahead and work this up into the meat. That way you've got all of the moist stuff moisturizing the meat before you put the dry ingredients in. And like I said, depending on how dry it is, I may add more ketchup. But once this cooks, this will put off some juice so you don't have to make it too moist because it will do its own. I'm going to go ahead and add in some onions to the mix. I'm just going to use a little handful right here off the top. I think that should be, well, I'll, I'll do a lot. We love onion. Y'all know that. I'll wipe that off the top of that onion too. So here we go. I'm going to go ahead and mix that in real quick. And when it comes to using half a pack of liquid and onion soup mix, you want to make sure you not only get the onion on top, but the spices on the bottom, which is not that easy to do. So what I'm going to try to do is see if I can maneuver the spices down to the bottom, shaking it upside down, because they're smaller. 
and then pour it in. And I think I succeeded. I see a bunch of spices in there. I'm gonna put about half of this in. Yes, I've got onion in it, but I also have the spice mix. And it looks like I need to pour just a little bit more in. We're good. Okay, that's about half. That's good. And I will just roll this up, and it'll be ready for the next time I only make one pound of hamburger. Now, next thing I'm going to do is add in half of the cornbread stuffing mix. Now, I'm going to do like I did with the onion uh, soup mix. I'm going to turn it upside down and shake it so all the little particles go to the end that I'm going to be pouring out of. And then I'm going to pour about half of this mix in. There are some bigger pieces in this. Yes, they are. And if you want to really stretch your hamburger, you could put the whole thing in for one pound of hamburger. But I'm just doing about half of it. It just, it gives it such an amazing flavor. And again, I'll put this in a Ziploc bag, and that can be used for another time whenever I only make one pound of hamburger, I mean, or meatloaf. I'm going to go ahead and mix this in, and then we'll decide if we need to add more ketchup or not. Depending on how moist or how dry it is, you just have to work it just a little bit to get all of these pieces of bread into the actual meat. Try not to work it too much because then it might be tough. I just basically grab the side and push it in, grab the side, push it in. That way I've got everything kind of going to the middle and making a nice little loaf. There we go. And that wasn't too much working. And I made a nice little one pound loaf of meatloaf right here that's going to go into the crock pot. Now, whenever this cooks, it is going to release a lot of grease or juice, but I am going to put a little bit of ketchup on the bottom, kind of like you would a, a lasagna. That way it doesn't stick. And then I'm also going to put this in to the crock pot itself. Try to get all the little bits and pieces, stuff it in the bottom of it. Because all that is is awesome, great flavor that needs to be in this meatloaf. Now, this is going to go on low for six to eight hours or on high for two to three. I mean, you just have to look and see when it gets as done as you want it. Whenever we get a little bit closer to time for to eat this, I'll put a little bit of ketchup on top. A lot of people make all kinds of sauces they can put on it. You do whatever recipe your family likes best. But this is an easy way to put together a meatloaf for your family and don't have to worry about having the oven on and heating up your whole home especially when it's summertime like it is right now so let's close the lid and let's get a cooking it's about 30 minutes before time to eat and look at how gorgeous that is my goodness i am going to go ahead and add some ketchup to the outside of this meatloaf a lot of people do a mixture of ketchup and sugar or whatever we just like plain old ketchup and my husband is very particular it has to be hunt's ketchup <laughs> so i'm gonna get this covered really really good there we go and use a large spoon and i'm just going to go over it with the spoon to basically get all the ketchup dispersed around the meat like that where there's lots of good ketchup flavor you know we put some in it well now we've got some on it now this can finish cooking for about 30 minutes and then it will be time to eat. This just shows you how easy it is to make a meatloaf in the crock pot. I think my meatloaf is the best. I'm sure everybody's does. But you know what? This is so flavorful. If you need a good recipe, right here it is. It's time for some chicken burrito bowls. I have got some rotel, white beans, corn, I've got some chicken breast, frozen of course, some taco seasoning, and a little bit of chicken broth. We're going to put in the crock pot, and then I'm going to add some rice a little later. <laughs> so, let's go ahead and get all this in the crock pot this morning. Let's go ahead and get some frozen chicken breast in the crock pot. I'm going to fill the bottom of the crock pot. I have two really big chicken breasts, and I think that should be plenty big enough. Let's fill in the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and add in the equivalent of one packet of taco seasoning. That looks good. And the can of Rotel cilantro and lime is going in next. I am going to also do the one cup of chicken broth. 
And once I pour this in, then that completes everything that we need to put in the crock pot. This is going to go on low for six to eight hours, or you can put it on high for two to three. It's not going to take long for that chicken. And whenever the frozen chicken cooks, it's going to release a whole bunch of fluid. So you're going to have a lot more fluid than this in there. But I'll bring you back whenever we do the next part of this recipe. And I came home, and this is what I found. Look at that. Ooh, beautiful chicken. It didn't take long for it to uh, succumb to its fate. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and put this in. I've got about 30 minutes till Danny gets home. And I know that this recipe says to add all the corn and black beans uh, three hours before. No, you don't need to do that. I'm going to go ahead and put in the black beans. I'm going to go ahead and put in the corn. And then I have some leftover rice. Now you can put regular rice in the crock pot and let it cook. Or you can do like I'm doing. I made rice for dinner. I had a lot left over. And that's what's going in this chicken burrito bowl. Instead of regular rice that you would make. So I'm going to go ahead and let this stay in here on low for about 30 minutes. And a few minutes before he gets here, I'm going to add in all of that rice that I had already cooked. And it's going to go in here. And it's going to make it nice and tasty. Let me go ahead and lower this down. And I'll bring you back in a minute. And now we've got everything nicely melted together. It's been cooking with the chicken. And I'm going to go ahead and add in some leftover rice. You can add in regular rice if you want to and let it cook for three hours with the chicken. Didn't have time for that. You could also do 90 second rice. That would work also. But I have some leftover rice for Monday. And I know I need at least one cup. And I'm thinking that's probably more than one cup, but that's okay. I got plenty of wonderful juice. That this can go in. And I'm going to mix this up real well. And let this rice warm up to make our bowl. All right. If I need to add a little bit more taco seasoning or taco sauce or any of that, I will. But this is starting to look really good. Got to get the cheese out because you know I'm going to put cheese on top of it. But let me go ahead and let this rice absorb some of that excess fluid. And then it'll be time to plate it up. Okay, now let's get it zhuzhed up. You know I'm going to put a little bit of taco sauce on this. And not much, just a little bit. Because you know I think it's going to need a little something. I'm going to put a little bit of red Cholula and green, which is the green Tabasco sauce. Now, the last thing, well, next to last thing, the last thing is going to be a little bit of sour cream on the top and a little bit of Mexican cheese. All right. There you go. Really quick, really good. An easy way to make an awesome dinner recipe for your family. They will love it. You have got to make those recipes. They are so good and so easy. And if you haven't already, press that little button down below and subscribe. Press the bell and the all notification so you'll get notified each time I put a video out. And you know, Making a good meal without heating your house up when it's so hot is always a winner in my book. And until next time, see you then.